what your choices have been and what karmic timelines and contracts you have journeyed. The light is calling for the reunification of all aspects of life in this realm now. It is calling for the cleansing of all polarities. It is calling for the rising of all sacred heart centers now. All are being summoned home to the greater light now. Hi, and welcome to Whole Soul Mastery's Live Well, Live Whole podcast series, where we focus on integrating polarity within and bringing a greater awareness to light and unity consciousness. I'm Marie Muller, and I'm an author, a channel, and a host of the Whole Soul Mastery podcast series. And I'm here today with Del Sol Entien, who is a seeker in the hero's journey, a knower and rememberer of divine truths and a heart-centered practitioner and creator in the new earth that's unfolding. Del Sol has a YouTube channel that is Solaris Trinity on YouTube, and you can find some new videos that he's going to be posting there as well. And I just want to say I'm so, so excited to be talking with you today, Del Sol. We have lots that I know wants to stream through us organically, um, and we're just going to plant some seeds in this conversation today of what comes through us, but warm welcomes to you. Thank you for having me here. It is an honor. Um, I know I've been uh, viewing your YouTube channel for quite some time, and then I've been integrating in the comments section, and it's um, it's been exciting, and I'm loving this journey. And thank you for being out there and doing exactly what you need to do um, to integrate others and accommodate others on their journey as well. So thank you for having me here. Thank you. Well. I want to maybe start us off a little bit about you telling just a little bit about your your own journey, your journey of spiritual awakening. Were you always connected? Was it something that you rediscovered at a certain point in your life? Share a little bit about you and what you know helped you arrive in this place of a greater presence and awareness inside you. Well, um, I was one of nine born on St. Thomas, Virgin Islands. And um, out of the nine, I was normally always alone, out doing my thing, um, just observing. I was very observant and very analytical, um, just noticing things and always off on my own journey. Not knowing that later on, it would lead me to be where I am right now as, a, I guess you could say a solo, a soloist, um, exploring new realities, new realms. Um, but I've always known that I was connected um, mostly to the water and to the earth um, because I could be in the water all day mm. and I love playing in the dirt. I love outside. So that was always my connection and I'm still connected that way. Mm. Fast forward to uh, early childhood, and then early ad adolescent, and then now it's 2008, knowing that you're always connected and always searching for that, that void, to fill that void in there. Um, and then 2008, things started to click, um, noticing you're waking up and vibrationally, everything's changing around us and you're noticing the sunshine is different, the light is different, the air is different, the color of the trees is different. Mm. And every subtle images and instances, the colors are just now changing and you're noticing these things more and more. Um, and then you start to notice your own vibration within, and then you notice that certain things are vibrating out of your field mm. and your field is expanding, but things are vibrating out. Um, fast forward to it's 2008 and now first marriage didn't work. Um, I've come to learn that not all relationships are meant to last. It will just carry you through to a certain point. And then after that, you take what you need, 
what you learn and then you move mm -hmm. on as a blessing. Um, so everything didn't start working until I would say 2012, 2013, um, December 2012 um, was a huge turning point um, where everything was just, it was a still point. And I started seeking more answers. Um, I developed a family on Google Plus, which was a platform that great many of us use and then now since went extinct, um, gathered a lot of friends and it really opened me up to say, hey, you're not alone. There are other seekers like yourself seeking answers, looking within and then coming together as a community um, where it really thrived for a few years. And then things really awakened in 2013 and 2014, where I started becoming into my own being and my own understanding in my place in the spirituality. I remember waking up one morning and I looked at my wife and I was like, I feel like I'm being dragged into a world I had no business in. Mm -hmm. But um, now knowing that this is my business, this is our place, this is where we start to remember and everything. So after the years go by, everything starts making sense. And mm -hmm. here we are in 2020. Um, one of uh, a friend of mine in Google Plus introduced me to your channel, and ever since then, I've been listening, and everything that you say has been resonating, and it's been resonating very, very loud over the years and every month. So I look forward to every two weeks listening to your channel and the resonation. So as I started imbued more of who I am and understanding everything else, I started to resonate and understand that we are all part of a journey and we are all connected. And I started bringing through my own frequencies um, through sound and vibration and understanding that we are always in the right place at the right time, whether it is to help another on the journey or to assist in a clearing or anything that one needs at that particular point in time, we are always here for that mm. as an individual and as a collective. It's so beautiful. And I could feel so many of the energies from you growing up on the island and having connections with water. When you were saying that, I was noticing your blue sweater, feeling that you're <laughs> wearing the ocean, you know, and talk about frequency, right? <laughs> We naturally attract, uh, you know, who we are. We naturally yes. attract our vibrational um, essence and who we are. And so I was just listening to all the different vibrations in your journey. And we do go through these timelines of we have many relationships over time. And some of those relationships are meant to give us, you know, a certain amount of lessons. And we journey for a few chapters of our life. And then we move on and they move on into other adventures. And some of us, you know, journey for um, a whole lifetime. But there's a there's a divine timing to all of it. And there's a precision Absolutely. to all of it. And it's like we have to, we have to be in the journey. And like you said, you sound like a, a very observant child. I think having that, um, that ability to be, I don't know if you would have used these words, but content inside yourself. Even as a child, you had this uh, way of beingness that you were comfortable with yourself and that yes. gives you a state a state of presence right yes everyone always talk about they always talk about my presence whenever I'm in some when I'm somewhere or in somewhere doing something um, someone would always look at me and say hey are you military are you undercover um, <laughs> and it's funny because my nieces and nephews will come up to me and be like, my friends think you're undercover. And I'm like, no, this is just me, I'm observant. I, I know what's going on at any given point in time. And I'm always in tune with the energies around. So it's like, I'm looking, I'm enjoying things, but I'm, I have this serious look on my face as to what's going on. 
elsewhere and other dimensions in the flow of things. So it's um, it's always being present. And you said something perfect where it's divine, guiding by the divine, um, where everything is in divine timing. I, I come to understand that you're always exactly where you need to be on the path. Um, nothing more, nothing less. You'll always have everything that you need at the right time. Always. And I've come to understand that. And you, right, and you, we do come to understand that, don't we, from, from living and allowing the experience of life to move through us. It's like we're spiritual beings having a human experience. And so we are vibrational beings having a physical experience. And, you know, I know before my own awakening, I guess I would say, I was always present in my life, similar in the ways that you describe. And I, I would add the words, I felt very empathic. I was a very sensitive child. And so life sometimes was even a little bit overwhelming because I was perceiving a lot more and it didn't have a language for that. But we, as we awaken and we move into this greater awareness that we are these spiritual beings having these human experiences, we start to really value this human vessel and we can start to be a witness and have awareness that energy is moving through us all the time, right? When we're not overly attached to who we think we are, we can be more an observer of the energy that's on the move all the time. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, when we come in contact with that energy and we allow it to flow, um, others are set in our path to then activate other energies within us right. and tune, changing our vibration and changing our frequencies. So everyone that we meet is an integral part of us mm. on our journey and also on their journey. Um, so everything as we evolve, we meet different individuals at certain points to trigger within us yeah. a different frequency and a different energy and a different understanding and a different knowing. So we're always evolving every day with the frequency and the energies right. and vibration. Always constant flow of flux. Nothing is right. Nothing is fine. Nothing's static, right? And it's it's like they say, like every moment is a new creative opportunity. Every moment is part of creation and we're the creator in that creation that's experiencing the divine. And I know not all of our listeners necessarily feel like they're tapped into all that all the time. And I, I can speak from experience. My life hasn't been absolute bliss in every single moment, but it's always been an invitation to bliss. And when I haven't been experiencing something that makes me feel joy or makes me feel flowful or something that I want to expand that feeling or just soak in that, that, that experience of greatness or amazingness, I'm aware that that also is informing the creative moment, the moment of creation that I'm in. And there's something inside my life. I mean, maybe that's something we want to talk about, but I, as a child, I was very aware of always called to create something. I would, my channel on YouTube is color the magic. Now I didn't have those words when I was a kid, but that is how I lived. I literally was a kid who like colored in coloring books. I was always drawing. I, I had my markers. Like I was a very creative you know, star being a creative, empathic, sensitive child, right? And I had a lot of imagination and, um, and that's who I was. And then like many of us, I went through, there was an experience. I think for me, it was when, um, and I write about this in one of my books, Cosmic Wealth, when I was skipping home, cause I think it was like Christmas break and I was seven, eight or nine ish at the time. And I was like a little Christmas elf, so excited because Christmas was so magical to me on every level. And I think that was the time of year where I really just allowed the full expression of my joy at that time of year. And, um, and, and someone saw my happiness, one of my neighbors, one of the you know kids in the street, and we were coming home from school. And I think she was kind of looking at me, watching me and be like, 
you don't still believe, do you? Like, what's wrong with you? And I was like, what do you mean? And I'm you know, still, still skipping and happy and, you know, it's Christmas, it's Christmas. And, um, and she said, she said, well, you know, there's no such thing. Like the whole thing is made up. And, and I write about this in one of my books because I talk about, and as I reflected when I was even writing that book, what it's like, the look on her face, I can still remember it today of like the pain she felt that it wasn't real, that the magic wasn't accessible, that she had already gone through the disillusionment of there is no such thing as magic. And I was like, well, I'm sorry to be the one to tell you, but it is real. And, and, and I skipped on home and I talked to my mom and I was like expecting her to say, honey, I don't know, you know, we'll, we'll find ways to support her or whatever, but no, of course it's true. But no, of course my parents sat me down and said, well, you know, it is a nice story and you were always so excited about it. And, you know, and I felt, I, I just remember thinking like this, I know something inside me that's true. And now for the first time I'm hearing people around me, they've lost connection with that. It's like the Polar Express. Do you remember that story? I remember, yes, absolutely. It's As like- we- <laughs> As we get older and we start to disillusion and we start to disconnect from what's truly inside that keeps us that child that's within, that we get to honor that part of us. Um, we get to go back and return to experience those experiences that brings us joy um, in the moment. We get to be in that moment of pure bliss. And we believe, when we believe, we see everything around us in the little micro fractures and we get to enjoy them just a little bit. You turn around, you see that glimmer in the side of your eye and you smile and you move on and you know that magic is all around us. Absolutely. And I think having that like presence, that inner child inside us, that excitement, that awareness that every day is, is a new adventure. It's a new creation. It's a new way, like, who am I gonna meet? Who, what interactions am I going to have? How's the energy going to move through me today, you know, in a new way? And inevitably, even though we're in a time of COVID right now, while we're recording this podcast, you know, to put some context, if somebody finds this video much later, years from now, you know, (laughs) and, and we might be, you know, you might think I'm just in my house. I'm not seeing many people, or maybe you go to work, right? Or, but there's magic everywhere. And when that spectrum of like cosmic color comes into your life that everything is just a little more vibrant when you allow that kind of magic in and I just want to say in my story which is kind of in a way the essence of the polar express and I think it's it's fairly universal for people anybody who practices um you know who's practices the Christian faith in some way and celebrates Christmas you know that's just one way where it's almost like we have this culturally conditioned age where it's okay to believe, you know, it's okay to believe at three. It's okay to believe maybe at five, you know, at a certain point society conditions us to, okay, now there's like, it's not age appropriate to believe. It's not okay. It's not okay to, yes, absolutely correct. And that we're now changing because a great many of us are finding ways to believe and extrapolate those codes that are within to further expand the experiences of just being in the light and walking with that light wherever you go, knowing that nothing that anyone can say or do can affect you on the inside, but you have the utmost ability to just by your mere presence being wherever you need to be, to change the whole dynamics of the situation at hand, just by your presence and you believing in that light. It is so true. And I just want to call attention when you're talking about that, that your name is Del Sol. And Sol, I believe in Spanish, is sun, right? That is correct. So it's kind of of the sun. Is that (laughs) what your name means? Yes, it is. I am of the sun. (laughs) Uh, And I used to... 
as a kid, I was like, I bring sunshine wherever I go. Um, and now I, some people know me as Dom Asu, as the blue sun. And um, which I understand is very, very rare to have seen or the blue sun. Um, people attribute to Sirius. Um, so I am a blue sun, just a blue sun, just here, existing. Emanating, emanating those frequencies as a willing presence, aware of yourself as this amazing multidimensional divine being. Emanating sun codes to all those who are in my presence and are also just weaving light, just wherever I go, right. um, weaving light into the grid, into the planet, into everyone that's around me. And um, I honor that every day that I go out and it's, I never know who I'm gonna be meeting at any given point in time that I may be assisting. Mm -hmm. um, just a smile or a few words or anything else like that. It's, um, it's remarkable to be on a journey. Sometimes I come home, I speak with my wife and I tell her of the experience of my day. I, I met this individual, I did this and I did that. And she's just like, how <laughs> just going to work will do that. But yes, it's, it's honorable and it's, it's a beautiful journey and it's, it's, it's great. And I love it. I love every aspect of it. Um, I never know what's going to happen or how I'm going to react or what energies are going to hit me or it's, it's beautiful, but everything is always welcome in the divine. Yeah. There's a, and there's a peace, there's a peace and a joy in what you're describing to the vibrations of that. There's a groundedness and a, you know, obviously a positive energy when you can move in your day and know that everything is happening for a reason. Everything is meaningful. Everything is purposeful. I think that was one of my early experiences when I was first started awakening and I first started to re-allow. So if I was a child that remembered, and then I went through a t period of time where I didn't completely forget, but I became like a regular kid in a 3D earth who went to school and did homework and, you know, yes, all yes. those things. And as I was reawakening back into my sovereign essence, my soul presence, my higher self, you know, that essence of the divine in me, I was remembering and you know there are just there are many ways to allow just allowing source energy to shine through us my my old my business the umbrella if you're del soul which is of the sun right and and my business is called shine your light gifts my book series that i wrote is shine your light the two of us are tapped into these energies and all of us are, we're just voices and messengers right now for anyone listening, that this isn't just, it's not just something that was for two people on the planet, you no, know, you and me, right? It's for everyone. It is for everyone. And we are here to shine that light so everyone can see, can understand, can they have questions, we may be able to assist and guide them and allow them to shine their own light, to come into their own truth at any given point in time. And I know that when we reawaken, there's a lot of questions and then the ego gets in, involved. It's like, I want this, I want this, I want this. What's next? Why is this? Why is this happening? Why am I not here? And so it's gonna go from step one and we all wanna conceptualize everything and put everything in a box. And it's like, we go from here, we go from there. But when you break the walls down, it's ever flowing um everything comes to you at the perfect time when you come to an understanding or you have visions everything is in timing you all see what you need to see at any given point in time you don't see the entire picture yet but you get this part then you'll get this part then you get this part and then everything will start making sense along the way mm. and then we honor those gifts and those visions yeah. energies that are streaming to us even though it doesn't make sense now but hey we are conduits of yeah. the ever flowing energy that's within us that's coming through us it's such you said that so beautifully that essence of us as conduits and as vessels and 
there was someone I think that once talked about, and I even might've written a song about being a vessel to a holy purpose. And um, I think many of us can tap into that. A lot of people are asking themselves that question, what's my purpose, what's my purpose? There in the last few years, and especially this last year, you know, 2020, which the guides that I channel have talked about is the ultimate year of clear soul sight. I love this year, it's a beautiful year, it's amazing. It, so it, much change. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And change is creationary, right? When change is coming into your life in whatever form it is, it's shaking up that which no longer belongs, that which no longer serves. And it's shining a light in what wants to manifest as a new or expanded experience in you. So, you know, change can be very uncomfortable if we're trying to hold on to what was when we're not allowing ourselves to be that presence and in the flow. You describe flow so well. It's just you when we awaken, there's something that happens when that the boxes that we live in from our egos and they open up and they expand and we drop the walls, I think you said. And then we're in that presence with everything. We're in the oneness and you you join the flow again, right? Yes. I remember this perfect vision that I is I was on a meditation group meditation and in some um, um, understanding like language and speaking like language for the first time and I remember once I got to a point I was thrusted into this space into a vacuum and then all of a sudden all these symbols just came rushing into me and I'm like okay what's going on. And understanding that all these symbols were always within me mm. at all point in time. It was just waiting for the right time to reawaken and understand that, hey, these are here. These have always been a part of you. Mm. You've just not been in tune to them. So now they're here and you can understand and you can share these along the way. Mm. <laughs> it is. That's where the magic is when you yes. realize that it's been within you the whole time, but there, the way, you know, the way the ego works and the way our conditioning works here is that we are kind of carefree as these children, as these inner children. And then we are conditioned into more and more boxes, whether that's school, whether that's, you know, um, you know, families, requirements, expectations, all those things, they, it, they start to put more and more of the walls up. And then as adults, we feel those walls. And unless there's been kind of a catalytic experience of some kind, whether it's a relationship that's falling away, whether it's an illness, you know, whether it's something financial, stress is squeezing people, there's, there's, you know, this is a very creative universe and we're very creative beings. So we can create all kinds of squeezes that can catalyze us and take us into experiences that, that aren't comfortable, that aren't uh, maybe fun or flowful. And, and, and when we're feeling that, we're feeling all of our walls. And I know I can speak from experience that it's, we'll defend those walls or we'll hold on to them because we'll feel like that's what we need to defend or that's what we need to work hard to maintain the structure. And in fact, often when we transmute that pain, it's when we drop the walls it's when we yes. let go the conditioning and, and allow the you let go of the conditioning and you allow that fear to set in and you absorb it and you understand it that it's not really fear it's just something new is coming something new is happening you're expanding and you're understanding that these walls no longer contain all that you are right. that you have the now the vastness right. of everything around you and all that at your fingertips and you can pull right. any given point in time. So the walls is very, very, very good concept. But then once you, once they fall and they fade away, they're gone and it's all up to you. Nobody can take those walls down, but you. Right. Yeah. And then, and then you feel more, you tap into that energy of the greater oneness. You do start to see your world with more expanded vision. Like you can feel other people more or in a different way and maybe with a greater compassion than you did when you had all of your walls. Because when your walls are up, 
we're all separated and you're trying trying to survive it's very kind of if we get into the chakra system it's a very root chakra way of living of I need to protect myself. I need to ensure my own survival. I need to look out for just my family and my little circle here. Um, but when the walls start dropping, regardless of the catalyst or the invitation that comes to expand and open our hearts more, we do start feeling other people. And that's when I think you, you do, we each move into being a presence, whether it's on a YouTube channel, whether it's just a presence in our family, with our kids, with our partners, with our parents, with our siblings, you become the sun, you know, that sunshine in your life that, yes. that people can simply receive or they can marvel at, or they can even not understand it, but it doesn't stop the sun from shining. Right. That is correct. You're you become that beacon of light that everyone will see, no matter where you are. Um, they will always find you, um, no matter where or when you are. You'll always have that one person that needs to hear those words from you or me or anyone who's embodied with that light, and it gives them that much more confidence to continue on their journey um, so they too can make that change for someone else. Yeah, right. And that's when just our presence, when people ask about their purpose in some, this came through a reading for a client in the last year and it, it was so profound and so simple and yet we miss it all the time it is that our vibration is our purpose. Our frequency is our purpose. Our presence here is our purpose. You know, our presence is our vibration. And when we, when we allow ourselves to feel that, we're not late for our purpose. We didn't miss our purpose. You can't miss what you already are, right? No, you cannot. <laughs> you cannot. And the purpose here for a lot, and I, a lot of people ask me, is that what's my purpose? I was like, your purpose is just to be. Yeah. That's it. Just to be who you are, who you're meant to be. Whatever that is, it's just to be here, to be that beacon to others. So you can expand around that. There's no, hey, I gotta do this, I gotta do that, I gotta do this. Just be. Wherever that beingness takes you, um, understand that it's not final destination. Exactly. Exactly. And it's, there's this energy of like the soul or the presence or the vibration or the divinity that we are. It loves nothing more than expansion. It loves to experience life itself and to expand itself. And isn't that what God or source or creation is? It's always expanding. And when we realize when we wake up every day, we are invited into enjoying the gift of that expansion of whatever interactions we're going to have, whatever connections we're going to have. And, um, and it, and I, I, I think it's important sometimes to also bring into these conversations because we can bliss out in this level of light. And at the <laughs> same time, there are, there are many people who would, uh, who I could say are presently struggling or even suffering. And I'd love to ask you, it sounds like you were always tuned into something really just beautiful. You were being fed from the inside out as a kid. As a kid, you caught, you came in with that presence. But now as an adult, do you find, are there sometimes when you, do you ever get knocked off your game and feel like, you know, what are the ways that you found over the years to, to if you're experiencing a challenge, what are the things that you do to recenter in what you already know? I think this past summer um, really, really put me, it took me out of my comfort zone and really put me into the, into the fire. And um, it, everything, um, as a district manager, everything, you're in charge of all these stores and you're doing this and it's, um, in this one store, the manager had quit and it was the middle of the busy season and, everything started after 
red, everything started cascading, everything just started piling up. And then all of a sudden it's like, everything is coming at you from all angles and dancers. And I remember um, taking a break, I stepped outside. And I remember I called my wife and I was like, I took a deep breath, that conscious breath. And I said to myself, I'm tired. <laughs> I literally said those words that I'm tired. And then all of a sudden I felt an insurmountable amount of energy just came around me and comfort me. And then um, later on, I read a post that it is okay to be tired, yeah. that you don't always have to do everything all the time. It's okay to allow others to come in and step in to assist. We are a beacon of light, but sometimes we need a break. Yeah. And it's okay to say that you're tired. And that was the first time I've ever uttered those words. And I was, I was tired. And it was kind of like a, a soul felt relief mm -hmm. that it was just like, okay, finally, he said it. Okay, now let's go. We got it. And then everything started changing. People came from elsewhere I brought in and it's, and everything started moving. So it's, it's okay to have that feeling. just like, I'm tired to allow assistance from others. Because in the end, we're not supposed to do it all, even though we feel like we have to, it's, it's okay to take a break. And taking a break doesn't mean that you failed. It just means you need time to rest and embody and then continue along. Because you need to tap in to just recharge at any given point. So if you're going 24 seven, constantly, constantly, you're gonna need that break and you're gonna find that breaking point and find that breaking point is okay to allow assistance and then take that deep conscious breath and allow and then re-energize and then go again. So it's, um, mm. it's okay to be tired. And it's okay to have that break and it is okay to get assistance, no matter how big and tall and that you are, you are going to need assistance mm. at some point. And sometimes those moments that come in that feel bigger than us or bigger than what we can handle is calling in the bigger backup, is calling in that partnering with spirit, with your breath. And I've spoken in a few podcasts, certainly in many of the transmissions, people who listen to Color the Magic and the Arcturian Collective's transmissions know that they always lead with that conscious breathing. It is, it is soul skill number one. And if you're in an, in an experience presently that doesn't feel good to you, right? Or you feel challenged or something is just either making you feel contracted or just completely overwhelmed in some way and you're just tired you need that conscious breath that is when source moves through you and we breathe i don't know how many breaths we take a day i still need to look that up but we take a good many right and we take we a good many but the ones that are count are the soulful ones that yes. recharge and re and gives us that pause those deep long ones that you fill yourself up and you can feel your entire body just lighting up. And those are the meaningful and the soulful ones that we actually need um, to give ourselves that pause. Yeah. And that resetting, you can reset yourself with a breath in one moment when you are overwhelmed, you know, and we just almost feel like the breath leaving us, like we feel depleted <laughs> or defeated, right? When you literally take a breath and you do it soulfully, like you said, you do it consciously, you're re-nourishing yourself in this divine reset. And you think about how many breaths we take, many, and we can do that in any moment. And, you know, even as a parent, you know, my whole life in the parenting journey, I've had a number of challenges over the years, and it's always good in any circumstance when we're challenged is to take that breath because that's that is spirit that is source energy flowing through you saying, we've got this. I'm right here with you. I'm breathing this breath with you, right? 
you have all the backup from the universe and from the creation to you know find a higher place find a more neutral response even right find a pathway or a solution out of whatever you're experiencing and um yeah we're sometimes to, yeah go ahead. sometimes in that experience sometimes all we need to do is just be a witness um not knowing that you can or will control everything. Sometimes spirit just needs you there to be a witness. And sometimes that's our purpose. Um, no matter how hard and difficult it may be, you sometimes have to be that witness and allow things to unfold and allow things to happen and be accepting mm. as that, as being a witness. Mm. We do not have to do not have we have control over our being yes but as to other contexts allow flow and be that witness to allow it to happen yeah yes and, and and the breath supports that witness observing that presence inside you that awareness that um helps a bigger perspective, a, a calmness, a grace to move through us when we're not always feeling that. And it's okay to admit that we're not feeling that because when we allow that expression with honesty and authenticity inside ourselves and we witness ourselves not feeling good, that's often when, like you're saying, what flows in is whatever is going to reset or support us um, to rebalance and recalibrate and step up in some way. Um, it is amazing. It is amazing to have that kind of faith and fortitude and you only get it by living it, right? You can't read it in a book. You can be inspired by other people and their presence and their gifts and their journeys. But at some level, we have to do the inner work. We have to do the vibrational work. We have to step up and be the one who takes that breath who allows the reset, who admits what we're feeling, admits the vibrations that we're currently experiencing, and that also summons in a higher solution, a higher vibration, some other way of seeing or experiencing what we're going through. That is correct. Yeah. Allowing better, bigger solutions to come through. Um, and because of at our level, we may not see all the possibilities, but when we take that break, of course, we take a break and a vibration changes mm. just by taking that break and allowing intervention. And then you can see from a higher vibration, a higher frequency, greater possibilities that can occur, that will be occurring. And then, of course, being that witness to allowing those frequencies to come into. Mm. So beautiful. Do you have do you have any other things things that particular passions that you have joys a, a way of being creative or even curious I love the word curious because that's also kind of an inner child trait of being curious of exploring all kinds of things um, do you have any particular like music or crystals or healing modalities that you turn to to you know keep your soul nourished and your light shining. I am a tea connoisseur. <laughs> um, I love blending of teas and making my own batch. Um, no matter what it is, um, I have this great tea spot that I go to, and I and when I'm always on the road, I venture into these tea shops to see what they have, and I love mixing teas. So when I come home and I mix tea, my wife is like, oh, we're back at it again. <laughs> like this, this is tea. This is beautiful. So it's of the earth. I love gardening. Um, I love going out there and planting, um, doing these things. And I, I love the earth, just the dirt. I love playing in the dirt. I don't know why. It's just who I am. I love the dirt. And I love connecting with Gaia herself. And it's just there. Um, ah, well, that's what I love. I love the water, of course. Yeah. <laughs> um, I haven't been there recently in a long time, but yes, it's um. Whenever I'm not doing these things, I'm always outside, listening to the frequencies of the 
that's around, especially of the earth. A lot of people talk about the res, the human resonance and being in tune. Um, so it's kind of just sitting still and allowing the frequencies to flow through me, whatever they may be. Um, yeah, just sitting in a quiet spot and just be, allow my thoughts to just go and connect, really connect and um, just be. But tea, love tea. <laughs> 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 it's amazing. Each one of those things really is a, a nurturing um, experience. It's a nurturing relationship, the relationship you have with tea. I mean, when people, you don't have to be sick to enjoy tea, but like when oh. we are not feeling well, a lot of people will naturally That's grab the first tea. thing you get, grab some tea. <laughs> right? You know, the spirit knows what feels good and, and yes. get your hands in the dirt and creating in that way. Um, just connecting and really think about when you're in water, even if you're taking a bath, but if you're in the ocean, right, the salt water is, exp is especially cleansing. There's something I've read about that. I've actually wanted to look that up again. There's something about salt water, which is not unlike an Epsom salt bath, I guess, the salts and our system, right? Yes, it is. Ah, it is beautiful. It is um just allowing the flow and everything about the water is just, I can feel it just moving through me and just feeling, yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 is. It's, it's, it is beautiful. Allow everything to just flow naturally. It is the essence of life. Water you is water. life. You have the water and you have the sun. So you have the best of both worlds and then there's the earth to allow growth from right. within. So it's 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 really connecting on all levels, on all social levels. It's um yeah. Yeah. And you sound like you don't live at the beach now, no? You're not I live in England? I live probably about 15, 20 minutes from the beach. Yeah. Um 15 to 20 minutes from the beach. Um we haven't been there recently because of COVID. Oh, you know, right. It's like so um, everything is being released and relaxed. So we will eventually get back there. Get back there, right? But it's, it is, I found too in my own life, that that's where that inner child or that ability to tap, to look inside and we can, we can connect with the energy of water, even if we're not like the ocean, we can connect with the ocean, even if we're not at the ocean, you know? Oh, absolutely. Can, right? Absolutely. All it takes is our thoughts to take us to where we need to be, um, yeah. to open up and really connect. And we are much more than what we are capable of or allowing ourselves to be um, because we connect. once we connect, we connect on the deeper levels and with the energies, it'll take us and it'll bring to us what we need. So. If we sit in meditation and we want to say, hey, um, let's connect with the water, we can literally open up that window and allow the water to flow through us, all around us, and we can be in that bliss at any given moment. Um, same with the earth. You can go outside, you connect, barefoot um, with the earth, but you don't need to do that. You just open up again and you can really connect. Um, set meditation, everybody meditates the same way. Um, they ask me, how do I meditate? Sometimes I was like, I'm always in meditation. Mm, right. They're just constantly going. I'm constantly listening, listening. And if the thoughts come, the thoughts come. And it's just, you just constantly, if you're in constant meditation, everything will connect one right after the other. Yeah, it's that flow. It's that flow is the natural order of life. It is part of the de divine design. And uh, when we're not experiencing that, and like I've said, I've been somebody who has not, you know, I've had my own experiences of not being in the flow. And the discomfort is my cue that it's, you know, to go back into that breathing, to reset and realign myself with the natural flow and to allow myself to release the things that are a cog to that flow that are blocking somehow that flow. Um, yes, and sometimes I've come to understand here as well, 
Um, if we're listening to certain frequencies and certain music, certain meditation and stuff, um, there comes to a point where you we are going to have to evolve to something different mm. because you're going to get to a point where it's like that's not that doesn't do it for me anymore. It's not doing the same thing. So that means my vibration is changing, my frequency is changing. It's time to allow other to come in so I can attune to a higher frequency mm. and allow myself to expand even more yeah it's it is it's so true that um i've experienced that and it can be fun it can be beautiful when you can say that no longer feeds my spirit it no longer gets me excited i no longer have the same response and if we can recognize that you know the joy is and i wonder what is going to you know what new music i'm going to find what new podcasts or books i'm going to discover or people that i'm going to meet or whatever it is there's a call to newness at that point that expansion that's what the soul loves i mean yes <laughs> you said it perfectly there is a call to newness and yeah. when you do that everyone that's going to trigger you will be placed in your path right yes right and so it's like you're meeting it's like you're meeting old friends mm -hmm. <laughs> yes yes it's like you're meeting old friends that you resonate with and you're like what i you just they're just old friends yeah they come here they're here to remind you that hey it's okay we got you yeah this is it this is how you be and this is how it is and now Let's go. Right. Let's go. <laughs> That's exactly right. Yes, let's go. <laughs> I just want to ask you before we close out, is there is there any message that you feel you're living by or something you would say to people who are in their awakening journey or um, you know, going to that next level expansion or trying to find that meditative moment in each moment, just the joy in life. Um, if, and even in there, if they're in, in hard times, like what would you say to somebody who's going through the journey? Everyone, everyone's journey is individual. It's different. No one is going to be the same. Everyone's going to experience something totally different at any given point in time. Um, there may be similarities, but every, Thing is designed for you and you specifically. Whatever your soul needs to grow is whatever is going to attract. Um, whether it be a sign, whether it be an individual that comes into your path, um, where there's going to be some pain, some sorrow, that's catered solely for the individual. And when that happens and that occurs, um, it's no longer is like, oh man, everything's crashing down on me, but you're still here mm -hmm. and it's crashing down so things can be built back up. So it's like you're looking, but then let's see the bigger picture, what's going on. You just got to get through this. Um, there are people along the way who are going to assist you. Um, and when you search them out, they will be there for you to help and assist you. But no one every two journeys are completely different. Um, we are going to experience different things. Um, I understand when I first started um, that to learn meditation, I always thought there's gonna be a hey, sit and do this and do that, but I could only sit for like 20 to 30 minutes. And then I'm like, okay. But again, we all have a different way of meditating, whether it's just be walk, taking a walk outside, um, planting, cleaning for some it's cleaning you get into that zone and you forget everything in your meditation going to the beach watching the waves come out watching the sunrise watching the sunset um whatever it is just soothes your soul just allow it and just be um we've all been what we call the the dark night of the soul yeah. and um we've all seen hard times this Everyone's journey is not all flowers. We've all been through rough times. Um, it's how we 
end up here. It's why we're here to assist those who are going through rough times to get to where they need to be to the next level. So be patient. Mm. Everything comes to us in divine timing. And sometimes when we see things, we have to take a step back mm. and allow yourself to be a witness. Mm. Because I come to understand that our energies are not for everyone. We can't, we're not supposed to save everyone. Um, we're supposed to show them. Now, when we show them, it is up to them to make that conscious choice whether to go or not go. And again, all choices must be honored. Mm. What's well, so beautifully said, there's just so, there's just a flow and a beautiful energy that I could just, I'm just drinking it in when you're talking in that patience that listening, that witnessing, that awareness inside yourself as the spiritual being having the experience, right? And, um, and I was thinking when you were talking that maybe presence, like my form of meditation is like you said, I'm not somebody who actually can do very well um, in meditation. I'm either receiving messages when I get quiet at all, I'm getting messages, but I also know when I'm just in my presence and I'm just in this beautiful breathing space inside myself, that's meditation. Like I'm being refueled, refreshed, revitalized in most of my day simply because I think that conscious breathing has been, maybe it was always a part of me, but now I'm more conscious of it. And when I'm more conscious of it, I know that a breath is a meditation. Just that conscious breath is a meditation. And Absolutely. I can't tell you how many people contact me and say, I know I don't meditate or I'm, I'm, I don't know how to meditate. And I think meditation has become a thing with like a one or two or 10 step process that if you're not doing that, you're not meditating. And the truth is, is like, like you said, gardening can be a meditation, going for a swim in the ocean can be a meditation, wherever you are and you're connecting with your breathing and your presence, and you're in that state of allowing, I think you're in meditation. Meditation Absolutely. is another word for connection. I'm connecting Absolutely. with who I really am. Absolutely. 100% right? correct. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and the other thing I wanted to say, because it was really important when you described, you were talking about everybody has their own unique journey. It's unique to them. Our journey doesn't have to look like somebody else's journey next to us. Comparing is kind of an egoic uh, mechanism um, to make us feel bigger or smaller than someone else. We all have our own unique way that we're journeying the spiritual awakening process right now and the activations that are happening. And I kind of, I was having this experience in myself when you were talking about that unique journey and, um, and listening for new ways that we're going to be inspired or led or guided in some way. And it's like, if you go, this has happened to my family recently, of course, with COVID, you know, we went to go cook like an, a soup that we love. And then we realized we didn't have like the onion and the celery. <laughs> this like forms the core foundation of the soup that most people cook, right? But what we did is we were like, well, that doesn't stop us from making soup. You go into your cupboards or you go in, and you allow like, so the old recipe, the original recipe wasn't something that was working. You allow a new recipe and new ingredients to come in, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. That, that element of creativity. Yeah. At any point in time is spontaneity. Um, everything doesn't have to be a certain way all the time. Allow change. Um, things are ever changing, mm. nothing is if definitely yes Nothing is changing Nothing is always finalized y'all i'm always saying it's like hey what's the first thing it's just like change is inevitable mm. it's going to change whether you like it or not you just have to embrace it and love it a little mm. and it enhances everything around us when that happens right Yes. And there it is, is change is creation. It is, you know, 
And I think creation is always expanding and creating itself. And that's us. And that's you and you and I co-creating this conversation in this podcast today. And there's so many ways to create. That's what makes life is so exciting. And, and I want to thank you, Del Sol, for joining me in this amazing heart streamed conversation and connection that I know our audience is very much going to enjoy. And I look forward to having more conversations with you in the future. Thank you for having me. It has been an honor, yeah. always an honor to co-create with you. Thank, Thank you. you. And where can people find more information about you? Is the best way, what's the best way to connect with you? Um, right now I have the YouTube channel, Solaris Trinity, that I will be posting um, activation, light codes, um, water codes, um, whatever streams through me um, will be available there. Um, I will be developing a website soon where they can contact me. But once that gets going, um, wherever Spirit tells me to go, I will be um, there for everyone to assist whenever possible. Mm. And that's the greatest answer. Wherever Spirit leads you to be, there you will be, right? Yes, and absolutely. And for sure, more on wholesale mastery um, and maybe even potentially in some round tables to come. So I thank you for joining me. Thank you. Yes. And I want to thank our listeners who tune in on wholesale mastery and who also might be listening to this on Color the Magic, because I'm going to start posting more and more of these videos for the community there as well. And until next time, blessings, everyone. Namaste. Namaste.